always the focus is not me on, or people. The focus is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it becomes easier, including taking care of yourself. Because if I don't take care of myself, I'm going to get burned out. And I'm going to say, you know what, I can't do this. And what we see these days. So when I take 30 minutes, a one hour a day, a lot of women feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. You're taking care of yourself. Replenish yourself. Rest so I can continue the journey. And our bodies and our souls have rights upon us. Absolutely. This, I hate the noise of this one. I'm going to be an orta flat white alayım. Bir de bu çikolatalı kurabasan değil mi? Hı hı. Latte hangi bu? Büyük olsun. Bir de çikolatalı kurabasan da yapayım. Tek şey var mı? Ha yok teşekkür ederim. Oo yumurta güzel. Nerede mi? Aynısı. The vibe is so good in here. I like better than Starbucks. Okay. Um, I want Porsche Macon. Horse. I literally said a horse, which is even more expensive than yeah, the horse you make it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our own merch line. That will happen someday, inshallah. Uh, trip to sell abayas. Why did I say I abayas? I said I want sort of a face work. Face work. Now it's uh, an art and body face work. Oh, majoring in media. I said majoring in media. I don't know. I don't really see that. I'm quickly popping in to talk about italki. Thanks to italki for sponsoring this portion of the video. One of my goals in 2024 is to focus on learning Korean. If you've been following me for a while now, you probably know that for the past couple years, I've been trying to self-study Korean. However, I unfortunately didn't succeed my goal 
and my goal for 2024 is to actually take Korean seriously and finally sign up for an online Korean lesson. So I can definitely say that italki came in the most perfect time. italki is an online tutoring platform including over 150 languages with world's best online tutors. With italki, you can connect with a certified native speaking teacher for a one-on-one -on -one live study session. What I mostly liked about italki is that you get to pay per lesson, which means there is no subscription. Frankly speaking, I find this feature of them quite trustable. So when you are not pleased with the tutor you had lesson with, you can take another lesson with a totally different teacher, you know, like there's no subscription and that's amazing, you guys. I learned a lot from the lesson I took. You guys, the tutor I chose was such a sweet person. She was really fun. She also really helped me understand korean better one thing i was very like not sure about was the formal and the informal side of korean language you know that's a bit complicated but she made everything very clear and very convenient for me to understand now i can introduce myself in korean so let me just do it 안녕하세요 저는 Husna예요. 저는 카사흐스탄 사람이에요 그리고 유튜버 yeah also the lesson was 30 minutes long but i kid you not it felt like it was only what like 10 minutes long this way to write so just simply i am um, okay i'm gonna read it uh cha keys no cook oh this right oh this right oh yeah okay cook tom hanguk saram like it was it went by really quickly because it was just so fun and I felt like I was having like a FaceTime, a video call with uh, a native Korean friend of mine. You know? Learning new languages open very different and new doors or opportunities for us. So I advise you to set a new goal for 2024, which is learning a new language through italki. You can click the link in the description box below to start your language learning journey. Buy $10, get $5 for free for your first lesson using my exclusive promo promo code right here on the screen and just to note that the discounts are only available for the first 50 users so this is your sign to rush go ahead take your first language lesson with italki and enjoy it you guys like enjoy your language learning process don't forget to use the promo code and thanks once again to italki for sponsoring this portion of the video now let's keep watching the vlog
Hello everyone, currently it is 4.32 p.m. As you guys saw from the earlier clips, I am fasting today. There is a couple hours left until Maghrib. Uh, Maghrib will call at 5.49. So there's almost actually an hour left. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am not struggling whatsoever, alhamdulillah. I am having a very calm day. I'm mostly getting my digital works done today because I don't like have any chores or anything to do today except for you know like reading book catching up with my worshipings and stuff but overall most of my work was here on my laptop on my ipad and on my phone i still have some work left that i have to do on my phone um, i'm gonna do them quickly right now but yeah i just want to come in and talk a little it's finally 2024 today is the third day of 2024 and uh, so far so good alhamdulillah before 2024 i couldn't have any time to update my notion so earlier today i did that i updated my notion and i replied to some emails that i was not replying because you know it was the holidays um so i wasn't replying to any email um and today i replied to all the emails as well and other than that i also vlogged a couple of days before the last day of 2023, I vlogged uh, this winter fair that we went to. I will insert the clips right now. This video's topic is probably first few days of 2024 because I filmed a very similar video in the beginning of 2023. So I thought I would film the same thing once again in 2024. But right now, I'm still not in 2024, even if you guys are watching this video in 2024, which is a year later. Sorry, I had to do that joke. <laughs> oh my god, that was so cringe. Just like I said, you guys might be watching this video in 2024. However, I am still in 2023. Today is the 28th of December. Uh, Thursday? Is it Thursday? Yes, it's Thursday. And I just got ready. We heard that there was this winter fair going on. Um, I'm gonna go with my cousins and some of my aunts and my uncle. We are planning to have fun, um, have lunch, dessert, and just, you know, explore the place. And take some photos i will also film so you guys are coming with me inshallah so yeah right now i'm in the process of getting ready i'm almost ready all i have to do is just wear my coat my bag um so yeah Alrighty, guys i am ready and i'm going out this is the coat i was talking about it's really beautiful um my leather bag my heels let's go Guys, in one of my previous vlogs, you Guys, all love like Zach. Sonic the Hedgehog, right? <laughs> and look at his sweatshirt, his hoodie. He really wanted to show this to you guys because he's obsessed with Sonic. And guys, a little update. We came to lunch to a Lebanese restaurant. I can't vlog right now, sorry. So yeah, those were the clips from that day. And the weirdest thing that happened that day was we saw Maher Zayn. I mean, it was weird, but it was like amazing. Obviously, we were like really surprised. Uh, we were having lunch at this Lebanese restaurant 
the lunch was amazing by the way <laughs> and yeah we were just sitting and having lunch my sister saw him and at first she was like oh is that my husband because he can't be because you know like we don't know that he is here in Istanbul or not so at first she wasn't sure and then she looked at me and she's like Husna that is my Zayn. I was like Dina what are you talking about and she's like that is my Zayn. I looked at him and it was him uh, he was having uh, lunch with a couple you know friends of him I don't know maybe um, and all of us were huge fans of him um, we went near him and you know we took a photo with him he was really kind super down to earth mashallah so yeah that little incident happened um, but it was really <laughs> really surprising for us just like I said I have some work to get done I'm gonna do those peace out أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hi guys, I am back with a new Tafakkur session after a very very long time In fact, this is going to be the first Tafakkur session of 2024 and I am really, really excited because in today's Tafakkur session, I will be talking about a very, mm, maybe for some, it might be a sensitive topic, but f I feel like for me, it is a very special and deep topic. So it's going to be about our body, the human body. Unfortunately, we live in a time where comparing bodies are considered very normal and we all know that there are like out there in the world there are millions of girls women and men comparing their bodies to one another especially comparing their bodies to those you know, who post on social media so yeah i just want to talk about body and how we can gain self-love and just be comfortable with the body we have given the body that allah has created and i hope you guys will enjoy this separate session and i hope it will be beneficial for all of us First of all, body insecurity is a very common problem in our current generation. In fact, I myself, I was also insecure with some parts of my body, more particularly like with my face. I'm still very insecure with my skin. Um, I, am, I was once insecure because of my eyebrows um, and I was also insecure of my height, sometimes uh, the shape of my body. Uh, but then, alhamdulillah, I learned how to be comfortable in my body and be comfortable with my skin. Actually, no, I still like some days I do struggle with my skin. I have a very sensitive skin. I turn red when I'm experiencing any kind of emotion. Like when I'm shy, I turn red. When I uh, cry all over my face, like it's just red. When I'm angry, I turn red. When I'm happy, I t like doesn't matter, like regardless the emotion. I turn red, you guys, um, and that is still one of my insecurity. Uh, no one knows it except for you guys. Now, congratulations, the whole world knows it has not. <laughs> no, but I just want to be like very open to you guys. It is normal to be insecure with your body, with your skin. That's normal. But what is not normal is being ungrateful for your body being ungrateful for your skin. So I earlier today just sat down and contemplated about insecurity and about how we can love our body according to Islam as a Muslim. And then I came to the conclusion that in my opinion, I feel like there are two different types of insecurities. The first one is, yes, you're insecure, but you are not ungrateful. You are grateful for the body you have, you appreciate it, you appreciate the creator who created your body, but you know that you have to improve it. You know that, for example, it's not healthy or you're not, you know, 
you don't have a healthy diet or for example your skin you are grateful that you have a skin you have eyes that you can see you have a nose you know a mouth like at least like you are healthy but then you know that you have to look after your skin for example i my skin is sensitive and i always have acne problems because i consume a lot of chocolate i am a lover of chocolate however if i consume it too much then i always suffer some acne problems uh that's like an example you know like you know that you have to improve in your skin but you are also not like ungrateful for it you're not like oh my god i have a very bad skin i don't know what to do i hate my skin i wish i had like a clear glass skin you know um no that is th that's not it that's not the you know type of insecurity i'm talking about so what i mean is the first type of insecurity is you are grateful for your body for your skin for your like for your own self however you know that you have to improve in it right like you have to look after yourself you have to stay clean you have to work out you have to have a healthy diet but you are grateful for your body okay now that is a healthy insecurity it's in fact it's not even insecurity it is being cautious of yourself it, it is uh, having self-confidence okay and the second type of insecurity is you are just very ungrateful. You're like, I hate my body, I hate my skin, I hate my nose, I wish I had bigger lips, um, I wish I had a curvy body, I wish this, I wish that, I'm like, I hate my body, I wish I had someone else's body, or you scroll through like social media, you're like, oh my god, her body is so pretty, uh, I hate this body, I hate the way I create it. No, that is wrong. That is wrong. That's not the vibe we're, you know, we're working for, so don't do that. That is literally being ungrateful and if you keep on doing that, one day Allah will take a part of your body from you. Don't be ungrateful for your body, even if you are not happy with it. If you are not happy with it, first of all, accept it. And then ask yourself, how can I improve it? Search for your imperfections. Like, be honest with yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Be honest with yourself, but not like in an ungrateful way. Don't be like, I hate my body. No. Be like, okay, I love my body. I love the way Allah created me, but I'm aware that I am unhealthy. I should work out. I should walk regularly. I should have a healthy diet. Or if your skin is bad, you should be honest with yourself and you should accept it. Yes, I have an unhealthy skin because I consume a lot of you know, oily, like fast foods. I consume a lot of snacks and those are not good for my skin. Be honest with yourself. Gain self-confidence, accept yourself the way you are, and then focus on improving your body, improving your health. Everything starts with accepting your own self and being grateful for your creator, okay? Now that is what we want. So that's the first conclusion I made. And the second one was, I genuinely contemplated my body. So I went on a journey within myself, and I recommend this to all of you guys. The question I received the most is, Husna, how you came closer to Allah? How can I come closer to Allah? Now, obviously, reading the Quran, praying, watching, you know, Islamic motivational lectures and those kind of videos, they also were a very like helpful sources for me to get closer to Allah. But the most helpful one was going on a journey within myself, discovering myself, my inner self going deep down to my heart and just contemplating my whole self not only physically like not only contemplating about my body but also spiritually contemplating my soul so this is called knowing oneself knowing god when you go on a journey within yourself you get to know yourself know who you really are know what your real purpose in this life is and then with that you find allah that is what exactly happened to me i went on a journey within myself and then first I started contemplating my physical body, you know, like my hair, my eyebrow, my hands, like my body parts, basically. So in this video, I'll be talking about those contemplations, the physical contemplations I did regarding my body and my body parts. Okay, you guys, so please have a very wide and big imagination because the things that I'll be talking about in this video, you need to have like a really high uh, imagination for that. So... Okay, the first thing I thought of was, so we have hair, right? Like all of us human, we have hair. Doesn't matter if we're women or men, we have hair and our hair grows. That is normal. But then we also have eyebrows and eyebrows were my biggest insecurity in the past. I 
barely even have any eyebrows you guys um so uh, there were times where i was like oh my god i don't have eyebrows i wish i had one you know like uh eyebrows make a like a person's a human's face like really pretty you know um so i was really insecure about that but then i just contemplated about it like husna you have hair you have eyebrows and you have eyelashes our hair it grows right it grows regularly some of us look after it some of us go to the hair salon now imagine you guys imagine our eyelashes and eyebrows also growing just like our hair grows regularly like for example um our armpit hair a little tmi but you guys this is stuff occur you have to like think deeply okay for example our armpit hair and then like other hairs on other parts of our body and our own like actual hair they grow regularly so we look after them right men women doesn't matter we look after them when they grow but then there are other parts on our body that also has hair but it doesn't grow and that is our eyebrow our eyelashes imagine just like close your eyes for a second and imagine them also growing regularly it's like you look after your hair like once every week a couple times every month you also have to look after your eyelashes and eyebrows once every week and just like chop them off cuz they're they're just like growing like your eyelashes are growing and growing and once every week you have to like chop them off i mean we women we do eyelash extensions we do lifting we do mascara we do like you know we curl our eyelashes like that itself is like a lot of work now imagine on top of that you have to cut your like chop your eyelashes once every week oh my god that would be a disaster You have to go a little crazy while you know contemplating this, but that is disaster, you guys. That sounds really creepy and horrifying. You know, it, it takes a lot of work to just chop your eyelashes and your eyebrows. Like, imagine your eyebrows growing and growing and growing, and just because you forgot to cut them like two weeks straight, they are they're like they have grown until like here above your chest. Oh my god! Like, <laughs> that would be crazy, right? So this itself. is a proof that there is a creator you know it's it's perfect like everything is perfect according to its own system our hair grows our armpit hair and like other hairs on our body they grow but then eyelashes eyebrows they don't right subhanallah compare you guys compare your body parts with one another for example i compared my eyebrows my eyelashes with my hair i compared my nails with my teeth compare your body You guys, that's how you will get closer to Allah. That's how you will also gain self-love and just be comfortable with the body you have. Oh my god. Subhanallah. Like it could have been like that. That's what I'm trying to say like we could have been like that. If everything was created on its own, every if everything existed on its own, we could have been like that, you know? That would be our circumstances, but no it's not. Some of our hair on our body uh, like on our different body parts grow, the other don't. For example, our hairs grow, but our eyelashes and our eyebrows they don't. Our nails they grow, but our teeth they don't grow. Those are like little signs which are actually not so little on our body from Allah. Allah literally is shouting like, "I am here, my servant." You know, like find me and you will find yourself or find yourself and then you will find me. So just take a time to appreciate your body. We are created in the best form. God describes us as the best of creations like Allah created all the like seven skies like seven heavens and then he created the earth and the other planets and galaxies and still he was not pleased by himself he was like nope like this is not the best i've done and then he created Adam alayhi salam us like the mankind and then finally he said okay now i'm pleased with myself cuz this one like this human i created Adam alayhi salam is the best of the creations is the best creation i've ever created so far like he he thinks that we are better than those planets we are more beautiful than the moon the you know saturn neptune mars the earth those mountains the pretty sky the aurora you know the northern lights he thinks that we are far better and far more beautiful than them So who are we to judge our own self? You guys like who are we? Why do we think that we are not pretty and we have a very bad body like that literally means we hate Allah. Now the billah like 
if you don't like your body, if you are being hateful towards your own self and your body, it means you're being hateful towards Allah. Because why? Again, I'm coming to the beginning, finding yourself, finding Allah. We are, we, like every part of our body is a sign of Allah. We resemble Him, we represent Him. You guys, spiritually, obviously, spiritually, I mean, obviously, Allah is far better than us. I mean, He is not in our form, obviously. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is we resemble Him spiritually, you know. We are proof of His existence. Yes, that's what I am trying to say. We are proof of His existence. So why are we so hateful to our towards ourselves like that is what Islam is trying to tell us like don't hate yourself doesn't matter if you hate yourself physically or mentally because I know there are some people who are just perfectly fine with the body they have but they hate themselves because they are sinner they're like I've sinned a lot in the past I hate myself Allah will never forgive me right but they have perfect bodies so just don't hate yourself in any way in any aspect don't hate yourself if you are sinful and if you hate yourself because you're a sinner Allah is the most forgiving he is a ghafoor rahim he is al-afu he is at-tawwab if you hate your body like if you hate yourself physically don't hate yourself because Allah literally says that humankind is the best of creations he thinks that we are more beautiful than those butterflies he thinks we are more beautiful than the sunrise the sunset while you are here I'm sure you are like, oh my god, what? Like, I am prettier than the sunrise right there? I am prettier than the moon, the stars? What? Yes, you are. If Allah says you are prettier than those, then yes, you are. That is your reality. And that's such an amazing reality. Why are we literally trapping our own self? You guys. <laughs> wow, I should calm down. Because I just can't understand. Why are we so harsh towards ourselves? Why? Well, Islam is suggesting us a very simple lifestyle, a very simple form of loving ourselves. Why are we denying the fact that we are actually beautiful? So please, compare yourself with your own self. Compare your body parts, compare your fingers, compare your skin. What if, what if, okay, we had bones and we had muscles and we had veins, but we were not covered with skin? Oh my god, we would look very disgusting, like, ew, I can't even imagine. We would look horrible. We would just imagine everyone just walking without skin, only with their muscles. We would look very red and just awful, disgusting. But no, Allah created us this beautiful skin and then He covered our body with our skin. So also don't be ungrateful for the skin type you have. If you're black, if you're white, if you're red, or if you're yellow, don't be ungrateful just because of the color of your skin. Look at yourself, admire yourself, like Allah covered your muscles with your skin. Imagine you not having skin and just roaming around with the red muscles you have, ew. That would be disgusting, right? Even imagine it, we're like, ugh, like, oh, what, no, oh my god, right? We are like that, that's the way we react. So please, you guys, love yourself. Find Allah within yourself. Contemplate your body, your soul, everything you have in yourself. We are a whole machine. And be comfortable in your body, in your skin. And fall in love with yourself because you are a proof of Allah, of the existence of Allah. Guys, that was our tafakkur session for today. I have to go and pray the her. But I hope that help to you guys because I just don't want yourself being too hard on yourself like you are beautiful you are pretty I admire you I love you okay I've been speaking for the past 30 minutes um I hope this tougher procession was beneficial I hope it helped you uh to just accept you accept yourself in the way you are um and yeah stay safe may Allah protect you Ma'asalam. bye